Welcome back to Crypto's Juiciest News, baby dolls. You are a yummy, yummy baby carrot. Have you ever had them? They really, really are cute, friends. Bitcoin has taken a bit of a tumble, but can we even really call it a tumble? It's around $68,000. I mean, it looks bad on a five-minute chart, but on a monthly chart, it is still seven green monthly candles. By the way, friends, this is really, really, really important. Okay, by the end of March which is the month we are, the highest close we've ever finished the month before that in the previous previous bull market was around here, 61,000 American dollars. So if we do come back down here, you can see that it's liking this resistance becoming support. However, if we dip under, okay, that's going to be like, oh, did you buy on the Bitcoin ETF? <laughs> right, that's basically what will probably happen, okay, because... These monthly closes, they're really, really important because obviously the bigger time frame gives you more information compared to just these like uh, people throwing money in around on the daily, for example. And I'm going to show you the Ethereum price trends. But firstly, I mean, the Ethereum BTC ratio is still bleeding. This is actually most important. Did Ethereum blow its load too early? What do you think? Because that was what it basically did in the bear market. And now, it, look, friends, I'm hearing a lot of people say they've given up on Ethereum still. That's just because the price chart's gone down. I mean, what do you mean give up on Ethereum? Did, have you seen how expensive it is to use it? Friends, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you right now. You know, if Ethereum, if they want to kill the entire crypto industry, kill everyone, they do. They release sharding right now. They give themselves 100,000 TPS. Goodbye. Everything's finished. Literally, everything's finished. I don't know if you know this. Every single person relies on Ethereum being expensive out there. Not every single, but a majority. Every altcoin layer one, from Soylana, Pulse Chain, everything, okay? Because you don't care about the decentralization part, do you? So everyone needs it to keep being digital New York real estate, all right? And that's very interesting. And people just don't want to leave. You know, it's funny. I've even been talking to some friends. They think memes are never going to erupt on Ethereum because they go, oh, it's, 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 uh, it, it's too expensive to use, like, oh, brother. You got, I'm sorry, you got no ID. As this bull market heats up, people will be throwing in 20, 30, 40K, okay? That's what you're going to see. People are going to literally be so emotionally charged to come in. And guess what? Meme coin's going to be flying. All the money's on Ethereum, friends. It has what, 400 billion valuation, whatever it is now, three, 400 billion. The biggest market cap is, is there, okay? So, and it's got the Ethereum ETF coming as well. So, you like, you just... <clears throat> The, the main event of Ethereum, yes, of course, we're in all these other alt layer ones and all these other chains trying to play around, trying to make money. But at the end of the day, it literally, imagine New York, imagine they could just build higher sky rises and they had like super fast, like Futurama type of teleport tubes. What would that do to the price that's going, right? I think about it. What would it do? Because you'd have a lot more people being able to just live vertically in New York. You, you'd, a lot of people would move. Okay, so this is basically Ethereum hasn't been able to do that, right? So they've got to scale horizontally, which is actually alt layer one chains and layer two chains appearing. But this ETH BTC ratio, friends, we're still waiting for this 0 0.061. See, we never crossed it. We never crossed it. So like, I hate to say it, but like technically it's still being being pooped with the rest of the market. Um, we're going to still look at the altcoin index as well. This is super still important track. We're watching this like a hawk every single day, Okay. We're still waiting for the US Fed. Are they going to do the rate cut later on? Is people going to go some, through some jitters? And I, I can feel now, look, I'm, I'm going to show you the short-term time frame of Bitcoin's price chart. So we have the monthly here, but everyone's been, I don't know why, everyone goes down to these super short-term time frames to skits everyone out. That's all that's happened, man. There's literally nothing. But is it complacency? Maybe. Remember I told you we've had seven green monthly candles in a row. Everyone feels like they're invincible, don't they? That's really, really important, right? You always feel like you're invincible, yeah? You feel like you're invincible at the tops. That's why later on in this episode, we're going to go through some narratives, okay, that people are still paying for to today, and I want you to learn, okay? Because if you don't learn, you're going to be bag-holding in the next one, missing out on this full-on bull market cycle. I've already made lottery ticket videos, friends, AI, gaming, um, <clears throat> VVV launchpad, paid launchpad. We're doing all these lottery ticket altcoins, all these leverage altcoins, different cores, chain links reverse and stuff. Pulse chain, a lot of opportunity on there. Of course, all the core coins are still ravaged in price compared to everything else. Pulse versus everything versus Ethereum is still being crushed down. But it's the same as many other altcoins. So I just, I'm trying to tell you the stakes get higher and higher, okay? Because if this bull market is, as you all think, where everybody's going to get entitled to the massive amount of riches, it's not about just sitting there with your paper gains and never clicking, okay? It's about 
selling in euphoria. We need a process. We need a strategy. You don't need to worry about that now. When it starts to come down, I'll be telling you guys, hey, take 3% out, put it in another wallet. Okay, we're going to be prepared for that later on. But for now, we're still in a dip buying mentality. And very funny, speaking of dip buying mentality, this is the hex chart, friend. This is the e-hex chart. This guy who capitulated down here, it rallied plus 110%. So I just want to let you know, there's some dude, right? He he emergency end staked 100 million e-hex and then just dumped it for 170K. So that type of guy, he has now p-hex, 100 million p-hex. He's got 10 million, okay? He's literally got 10 million. And I'm going to show you all these resistances here and there with, with hex because a lot of people are trying to delete them, okay? So I'm here to give you more information. Of course, people, this is the thing, friends. When I show you this information... Anybody who gets upset, you know, if they're upset at me, that they were they were intending to sell at one of these key resistance zones, okay? I'm going to show it to you later on. But have a look at this, okay? Altcoin Daily made a Dogecoin to $1. 18 meme coins by April. Top 18 meme coins. That was literally the top. Friends, literally it was the top. And, you know, we don't know if it's the top, of course. But it's just, it's crazy how this happens. It's just like every single time, man. Like you guys make, they made it up here, right? Top 18 coins, smack. Now, it's still nothing to be concerned about, okay? Because even if we go back to this weekly chart, look, we've got so much leg room. It's not even funny. So much leg room, and we still have the 21 EMA and everything catching up here. So I guess we'll see, right? We've got Bitcoin halvening coming. Just to let you know, friends, just to let you know, every Bitcoin halvening has had a 39% drop, which is Bitcoin back to 44,800 American dollars. That's exactly what we just just be careful. Okay, 44k. Shouldn't be scary, man. We're cheering for 44k three months ago. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're cheering for it. Like, please, hold, please. You know what I mean? Now, now it's like FUD. Now it's it really is funny, friends. 44k on the ETF was extreme price, but I'll just be honest. You know, you, you've seen this before. You watch charts like me, friends. You see this all the time. Where did the weekends enter on the Bitcoin ETF? Okay, well they're gonna come and get tested. All right, and like, just they're going to come and get tested. Maybe they don't. I don't know. Maybe just go up forever. But ugh, this always happens, man. You enter on a buy the news event, and then it comes back down. So that's why when I tell you, when the most of the move is priced in, okay, look at this. When most of the move is priced in, people don't want to believe it. That's why we don't say, okay, look, when something comes out, okay, Bitcoin had already gone 214% on the ETF, okay, 3x. So... If it keeps going up, look what your upside is. Another 50%. All right. Another 50%, but only like a quarter of the move is left. And that's a huge amount. A quarter. Most of the move was already done. Three quarters. And this was like the most aggressive Bitcoin ETF move there is. That's why you, you're going to see things. That's why, friends, I mean, you even know this, right? Let's say Pulse Chain, right? Pulse Chain sacrifice and Pulse X sacrifice. Sell the news events. Both of them, still today. You're still suffering from today for your portfolio, a lot of people, because they did not see them as sell the news events, me included. I didn't think they'll sell the news events either because I did not know how much money was going to come in. Now we look back, we go, oh my gosh, we bought with every weak hand in the world and everybody's still basically in pain for it and underperforming the rest of the crypto market. So it's not about what you're actually in. It's about how early you are. And if, if there's unlimited pools and everyone can get in with you and there's a lot of excitement, there's a lot of demand, well, you're not early, are you? Now, one of the reasons we still think we're early to Pulse Chain is not listed on any centralized exchange. I mean, look at this, friends. OKEX delisted down here. You see that? OKEX delisted. And man, I made how many videos and posts did I say? Look, delisting should be bullish. That's it. Delistings are bullish, okay? Yeah, it feels it feels crappy, but delistings are bullish. And everybody doubted, right? Now, we're still hoping we get to Eric Wall's friendship price, which is a 6.7x from here, but the whole ecosystem really has a long way to catch up to, okay? And I want to quickly just mention to you, now we're starting to get hit in the bull market, my, before I go into a thesis, fancy, I've got the, I've got the ribbiting thesis here for you, all right? Ribbiting thesis, we're going to speak about, you know, Pepe and all these other stuff moving. For example, Brett, one of Pepe's families, now phones, this is 455 million market cap. I'm in just, in, I'm in land or fight, it's the cheapest, 11.9 million um, market cap, okay? But my, my ribbiting thesis, friends, before you even think about these, remember they're bull market only. They're only for bull market. They're for people to keep holding. Do you understand? Now we're at the beginning of the bull market, but look, I'm just going to show you, right? This is Hex's price chart. Have a look at this, okay? Because <clears throat> if you don't learn from, if you learn from learn from this and you you cry, well, no one can help you then, okay? Because you've got no one to blame but yourself. So look at this. You have, when you're looking at it here, you have P Hex, okay? Now Hex is 96.65% down after. Two and a half years. All right. Now, if you looked at this chart, okay, I'm going to show you this chart. 
Bitcoin and Hex, I know what people are saying. They go, I would have never held that. That's what other people outsiders are saying. And I'm thinking, hmm, I don't know, man. You're probably holding coins right now. You're going to be- believe their narrative when AI really heats up, when other things heat up, right? And I- I'm going to take you back as to how everybody held and why they held, all right? Because this, you got to learn this. You don't learn this, sweet, get out of here. If you don't want to learn, I'm sharing his- sharing this with everybody else, all right? So I don't want you to make the same mistake again, all right? This is important. So not all of these narratives came from, say, Richard Hart. They came from the community as well. But if they came from him, they were even more powerful because it's obviously very smart. He's a billionaire, right? So you can't fade that. Of course you can't. But then these all turned out to be mid-curve memes. Mid-curve memes was the, the crowd believed them and everybody got destroyed. Okay, so you have, look at all of these. So we're going to go through the first one. Hex was designed to outperform in a bear market. Completely wrong. Bitcoin breaks the all-time high. Ethereum's near the, Ethereum goes up. Even Chainlink, Soylana, heaps of things have re- um, recovered out of the bear market, but Hex didn't. Very, very, very important, okay? So it hasn't been a, a, a bear market hedge at all. So this type of, uh, so that's the next point as well. So it wasn't, it was designed to outperform in a bear market. So that didn't, that, that basically, what that means is if you stake and earn yield with everybody else, we all win together. That was the mentality. If everybody holds and no one sells, we're all staked, we all win together. What did we end up seeing, friends? What we ended up seeing was, unfortunately, okay, big players who's, who was telling everyone they'd never sell crushed the prices down. So this is Hex, Hex, Hex. This was pre, pre-Pulse Chain launch. Okay, we were here, we saw like Wallet DO1, not to single that guy out because there's just heaps and heaps and heaps of people, 40 million, 100 million Hex, which is a lot back then, okay? So things, these things just getting obliter- obliterated, all right? So don't trust, don't trust people like that, friends. You, you trust the charts, okay? The charts don't lie, the facts don't lie. So it wasn't a bear market hedge either. It was just correlating with Bitcoin. And now people are actually begging for it to be correlated. You see this? So basically at the start, someone magically, people speculate it's Richard. He sold the top here and then he buys Hex here, causes some sort of firmer run. But then look, when he was done, look what happens. Hex peaks out with Bitcoin. You see that? He peaks out with Bitcoin, even until Pulse Chain launch. Look what happened though. After Pulse Chain launch, I want you to see this. After Pulse Chain launch, friends, this is what happens. Look. Bitcoin goes up, no more correlation. You see that? So what happened? Well, you know what happened. They're still there. They're just in pulse chain. The, the, the value was diluted away, okay? Diluted away. It's the same chart for PHEX as well. So I'm trying to give you the full picture here. So that's why the narrative of what you're in, okay, it can it cost you, cost you big time, all right? That's important because what if people said, oh, don't worry, this thing is probably correlated. It's, it's older. It's more mature. It's going to hold up better. No. In crypto, people always keep going for cycle one stuff, okay? Obviously, besides Bitcoin and Ethereum, as you can see. So this was another incorrect, dangerous assumption. Hex will run first in the bull market. So when I was trying to help everyone say, hey, you know, Chainlink's low, for example, but it's up 4x from the low. Um, Chainlink's low, 90% call, 10% lottery, explore the stuff, launch pads and all this. When I was doing that, I was getting a lot of hate, a lot of hate for it because people said, people told me, you're costing people from money, from Hex. People are going to lose 10x on their money and retire because you are trying to tell people about other things. I was literally getting that every day. Look what ends up happening. Sadly, I said, bro, I hope you're right. I really hope you're right. That's why I do 90% call 10% lottery. What ends up happening? Everything else runs, this doesn't. So once again, friends, you can't, if you go all in on one ID, man, I don't care who's behind it, you're gonna get wrecked. That's it. You get wrecked. So you gotta you gotta learn for the next time, man. You gotta learn. All right. So hexagons were laughing at the rest of the crypto industry, and then hex went down more than Luna and Ohm with the airdrop stuff. By the way, now I think Luna. This is, this is probably the worst part. Luna, Luna victims got compensated with the airdrop more than Hex now. Oh my gosh. How do you explain that at the, at, from, from the lows? Like, wow, that's, Luna's, so friends, Luna was the example of what not to do in crypto ever. So if you went lower than that, what does that mean? Okay, that's just the market, or the market's choosing, friends. The market's actually showing this. I'm, I'm telling you this now. So do you want to learn, right? Do you want to be right or wrong? Or do you want to make money? That's what I'm telling you for the next one. Okay, do you want to be right or wrong? So everybody who wanted to be right or wrong, whether Hex would be a bear market hedge or overperform or decorrelate, okay, they weren't paying attention to do you want to make money? Because the cost of you being wrong was huge. All right, it was huge for you being wrong to the downside, but or the upside, right? So you don't you need to be careful when it comes to these, all right? So it didn't run first in the bull market. We also said Hex will break the all-time high before Bitcoin. What was their logic? They said lower liquidity, um, lower lower liquidity. Yes, that was one of the main reasons. It's lower liquidity. It's easier to pump. You can earn yield. 
and stuff. And, and what people were doing is this is why it's super important. Once again, people were basing their 2024 and 2025 predictions based off 2021. That's how I knew we were all wrecked. I was like, uh oh, this is not gonna. That's why, friends, I've been telling you last year, we could run very, very last. We could run a long time after everyone else. I've been telling you this, okay? Is that I don't feel good about it. I'm hoping we run earlier. Every time you see Richard buying, you think this is it, this is it. And then he stops. Okay, it's not, you know what I mean? So it's almost like there's a water pistol held to everybody's head. <clears throat> so these things, if you hold on to them, get wrecked. I, I told you, okay, look, Hex is a DeFi coin, okay? We call it a store of value, but look, nothing that has this chart says store of value, nothing. Do you understand? Dropping... 96.95% when Bitcoin's breaking down. That's not store value. That's DeFi altcoin. All right. Dropping as much as Luna is not uh, DeFi store value. So you can call it your store value, just like I can buy CryptoPunk and call it my store value as well. So th this term store value doesn't mean anything. It's just what's what is what's the market trading it like? That's all that matters. Okay. Do you want to be right? Or is it a store of value? Someone can find up some definition from like 300 years ago with, with some obscure thing. Oh, the store of value is like beauties. Um, yeah, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Yeah, you, you can talk like that, but like you, that's you trying to be, oh, I want to be right or, or wrong. I really want to be right. No, no, no. You want to make money. That's what I'm here to, just to tell you. Okay, so all these narratives, friends, is very important. So this was, this was basically the widow makers. Here we go. So Hex won't ever drop more than 95% because Richard Hart won't let it. This was being told at like 20 cents, 10 cents, 10 cents on the way down. I actually tell you exactly where I started hearing these things. Just to let you know, you were banned in the chats for even talking about, you know, this is a funny part. You know, I got banned like six times from the Hex chats, Hex trading chat. The first time I got banned, Hex was up here at like 40 cents. It went from 55 down to 40. Then it was down to 35. And I said, guys, we could go down to 19 cents. I got banned because that number was FUD. 19 cents. I'm not joking. That was the first time I got banned. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, I wanted to see, hey, there's a strong community, a strong cult. I, I want to come keep investigating. And of course, I held, right? I was still holding. So I actually sacrificed a lot for Pulsex. I can't remember exactly what I was doing at the time. Yes. So at that time, I was very, very confused. Okay. I was very confused. I was like, wait a minute, 19 cents. And now, now you look back. That's just euphoria. It is what it is. And so you can imagine anybody talking about sub 10 cents, you get like lifetime ban. And then it goes down to below one penny. That's combined by the way. So you know what? Now that they've killed eHex, so like the combined price, yes, you could have sold down there if you want to count it, but combined price hit below one cent. That's and that's look, before the SEC hit like 1.5 cent. No, one yeah, 1.6 or 1.7 cents. So it's still it's like the price I was saying. Uh, a number 19 cents and I got banned for, it dropped 90% still below that. Okay, so these narratives, very, very powerful, right? That's why everyone keeps holding. So <clears throat> this one, Hex can't drop 98% because it would mean it failed. This one was very dangerous because it basically implied to everybody that, well, one guy won't let it drop. It can't go down here, it failed. And now we've, it's moved, goalposts moved. Ehex, you no longer exist. You are gone. We're going to move to a new chart. All right. So see what I mean? Now we've got to continue forward. This is like the strategy to move forward here and there. So that's why I'm, I'm asking you, friends, if you have other coins, right, other coins, they're going to go ballistic. You're going to believe in whatever it is. Maybe Pepe hits 100 billion valuation. Pepe, altcoins, AI, all these other things that go up. I just want you to think of something like that. Well, they can't drop they're going to have charismatic founders and leaders and teams, and they're going to be backed by Amazon and all these other stuff. I just want you to never, ever forget that, okay? The price deviations, okay, no one's in control of that because just as quickly as you got people into the community, they can leave, they can step out, and they step out when they get the they get the fee. The fee is just spreading for everyone else. So <clears throat> why I've shown these for you is so you won't make the mistake next cycle, all right? And I've told you these now, Okay, I told you these now because I remember these, all these now, and these are very, very clear and transparent, right? And that's the thing, right? With these example, it's it's most obvious to use it for hex because I could do it for Bitcoin and Ethereum, but the thing is they've already recovered. So they're like, well, it's yeah, they're dangerous to believe in at the top if you're on leverage, but if you're in spot, who cares? Because yeah, you make like it starts recovering back. But hex is still down. Okay, so now you can see it's it's like every other altcoin. It is an altcoin, that's it. Every single altcoin fence. There's only Bitcoin, Ethereum, and then there's BNB. BNB gets bought from the Binance profits. So it's basically a cheat code. 
Okay, I'm not saying to buy BNB. I'm just telling you that's the truth. Okay, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and B now we're hoping PulseX does that. But the problem with PulseX is it only gets bought aggressively in the high volume activity. When the chain basically is not doing much volume in a bear market next cycle, it's going to get cracked hard, really hard. PulseX versus Hex is going to drop. PulseX versus Pulse is going to drop hard because the volume is going to drop. Do you see what I mean? So you need activity to keep it going. That's why with BNB, the person behind the scenes, they manually buy when, there's, when, it's, when it's crashing. They only buy as a defensive coin. They don't keep pumping it up over and over and over again. They just keep it strong. So I'm going to play for you some nice, gentle angel music, friends, as well. What you've learned today, right, it's, <clears throat> look, it's, I'm teaching you this so you think when you're rational. All right, if I, if I start talking to you about this at the top, you're going to think, I know what you're going to think. You're going to think, you've sold, you don't want us to make money. Because that's what everybody was saying last cycle, by the way. That was saying last cycle. Friends, you all saw this, okay? Let's be honest. Eric Wall, every time Eric tried to warn everyone, okay, everyone would come out and say, I, I read this. He's all made videos saying to him, Eric, you missed out on the 10,000x. You missed out on the easiest 1,000x of your life. You're just jealous. You can't get back on the train at all. It was literally... Now, Eric kept saying this every step along the way. So... Eric, Eric, fud, 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 and it kept going up, kept going up. But that basically made everyone complacent, didn't they? They go, well, I can't listen to this guy because he missed out. <clears throat> so you can never have that thinking, friends. Just because someone like misses out, you either listen to what people are saying. But that's why, man, I tell you, buying the pressure and selling the foyer, you got it. All right. So now you see, right, <clears throat> even though we are still down 96.65%, look at this, it's 29x to the all time high. Now, look, Assuming you soy boys don't sell, I know there's a lot of soy boy sharks out there. I think Richard removed e hex. Probably as a sign, he's like, look, I can only get p hex up above its all time high. That's probably the thinking, which is actually very exciting. If that does a 30x and then everything else does a 30x with, that's actually enormous if he does that. But just want you to know look, the Pulse Chain launch price is still 5 cents. We're below that. We need to get to that. And Testnet V3 is 12 cents. You can see 5 to 10 cents is probably going to be the next key resistance. But there's still another wonderful world of crypto out there where people are just coming in, friends. There's product market fit in so many other things. For example, meme coins. They, they, they're going up, man. Like, they're just going up. So I'll make another video again to cover the ribbiting because it's really, really, really important. Dog with hat has all the dog with hat, cats, all the meme coin stuff. They're probably, like, topped out now. Probably, who knows, right? If, if market keeps tanking and smoothing out with the, the complete junk stuff. Those things because of dog with hat, all right? And then we have Peppy as well. Peppy is like Ethereum city. So it's kind of telling you that. There's also, remember, Coinbase, their chain. They have 100 million customers, all right? So we're starting to see where to look for things. Now, Soilana, it's been running for a while. And like, what's the advantage Soilana has besides everything else? They just did the Ethereum upgrade. You could always have a season somewhere else. You know, that's something to think about. So I'm going to keep reporting to you as I see things develop. Make sure you like, subscribe, belly button, all. Catch you soon.